Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Misena Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at creating an espresso-driven pie chart inside of Cinema 4D. This is great for anyone who does like corporate videos or stuff like that because, you know, business people like to see their numbers in really big, flashy, shiny Cinema 4D ways. So without further ado, let's get in here and get started on this project. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of lay down our base for our pie chart. So we're just going to go up to this little spline menu and go to Arc. The next thing we're going to do is change the plane from XY to XZ, and that'll just sort of lay it flat down on the ground for us. So now you see we've got uh, the beginnings of a segment of a pie chart. The next thing we're going to do is change the type from arc to segment. And what this will let us do is let us extrude the arc out. So you can see we'll just hold down Alt and click our extrude button. Uh, disclaimer, I know my workspace is kind of different. Uh, I'm saying all the names of things right though, so just hit Shift C and type in what you need. So you can see it's right there. Handy little tip. If you still can't find it, just post in the comments and I'll do my best to let you know where it is. So now we've got uh, a little piece of our pie chart looking good, but you know, nothing really interesting is happening yet. Let's change our extrude and have it extrude on the Y axis, I believe. Yeah. Let's make it the typical 20 centimeters. Great, so that's looking good. Let's add some caps. Make this fillet cap, fillet cap. Uh, we'll have it be two steps with a radius of one centimeter. I'm just sort of plugging in numbers because it doesn't really matter. One important thing though is we're gonna have it constrained. So this will keep the segment the same size. So whenever we start layering more and more segments in here, they won't overlap and have some issues. The next thing we're gonna do is just hit Alt G and put this in a group and name it pie chart. And then unfold this guy. The next thing we're going to do is add our Espresso tag. So you just right click on it, go to Cinema 4D tags and Espresso. And boom, it automatically opens up our Espresso editor. If you need to get back to it, you can just double click on the tag and that'll get you there. So where do we want to start with this? This is going to be our sort of first pie piece. And it's going to have a little bit different Espresso than the rest of them. So this one will be a little bit easier. The first thing we are going to do is drag in our arc. And we will go to arc and select that and go to user data and hit add user data. And what this will let us do is add uh, our own little sliders in here. If, if you've ever worked in After Effects, it's a lot like adding a slider control for your expression controls. So it's just a Cinema 4D version. We're going to name this percent. And we're going to keep this as a percent and float. That is good. And what this will let us do is convert the percentage into an angle. So we can type in, you know, 50% and that'll give us a 180 degree segment. So now we've got our arc in here, and let's go to uh, user data, percent. Just hold down control and double click to resize that. And then we're gonna, in our X pool, you can go under system operators, click that open, then go to Espresso calculate. And we're gonna use a math node, change this to multiply. And then just drag our percent into input one. And for input two, we're gonna add a new constant node, which is under general, I believe. Yep, constant. The reason why we're using a constant node instead of just entering in the value here is just because I've noticed that uh, sometimes I will, you know, right click and, you know, hit remove unused ports and that'll take away uh, that input that just has a number written in there. So this is just kind of to save me when I'm being silly. The next node we'll need is called a range mapper, and that should be in calculate. Yep. And what this let us do is convert our 0% to 100% into degrees. So 0 will equal 0, but 100 will equal 360, and it'll go linearly in between those, which is super great. And it's nice to have this node for this because before I knew this existed, I had to like learn the actual equation, which is way harder than this. So our input upper will be 100. I didn't add a constant. Our constant is going to be 100, just making our percent from percent to 100. Uh, I've tried it, making our input lower zero and input upper one and not having this multiply node in there, but it just didn't seem to work right. And, you know, it was so easy to just add these in. I just did it. There's a lot of sort of work around things in this expression. So feel free to optimize it and make it better for you. This is just what worked for me. We'll change our output upper to 360. Great, so now that should be working for us. The next thing we'll need to do 
is drag in a degree to radians node, and we'll change this to go from degrees to radians, because for some reason, uh, the angle inputs in Cinema 4D are radians and not degrees, and that really confused me when I was first making this. We'll drag in another arc, and we will change this to end angle. Pop that in there, and hopefully when we go over to view, we'll be able to see... Bring a percent up. Yep. So we got a 50%, and we get 180 degrees. Look at that. Isn't that just the most wonderful thing you've ever seen? I think so. So we'll just make this like 25. Oh. Added a zero in there on accident. That's too many. And I'll just make that a quarter segment. And then we will just hold down control and drag this down. Make sure it's in there. And we're just going to work on this same segment. And we'll rename this to and And obviously, if you want to, you can add some Espresso and have these rename automatically. But, you know, we're not doing that inside this tutorial. Great. So for segment two, we are going to add a little bit more stuff. But it's not really that big of a deal. You could do this inside a separate Espresso or a separate X group. But I used to like keep it in all one big line and be annoying about it. So... This is all good. This all stays the same. Let's we'll drag that out of the way for now. And we will go up and grab our, just grab any of our arcs. And this will actually, this isn't an arc node per se. It's an object node that's referencing the arc. So what we want to do is change the reference to not be an absolute reference, but to be a relative reference. So this way we'll say, look from where the tag is. And we'll say go up one. So that goes up a level, and then, so it goes from the arc to the segment. So a level higher in the hierarchy. So like actually up a step, and then we'll go P for previous, and that just goes one previous in the hierarchy. So P goes up to segment one, but U would go up to pie chart, if you understand how that works. And then we'll go down, and that will get us to the arc again. So I'll rename this arc 1 and arc 2, arc 23, now we should see, oh no I messed up, oh no I didn't, it's referencing arc 1, look at that, how great is that, I think it's pretty great, so what do we want to do with this, you want to grab the end angle, so go object properties end angle, and then we want to go to coordinates rotation h, and that is rotation on the y axis, if that helps you out. Just control double click to resize that. Next thing we're going to do is go to math. Let's get a math node in there. I have end angle input one, rotation input two, and just have those add together. So, what we're going to do is have our arc two start at the end of arc one. So, we can just sort of build this up and have stuff be really easy if you need to add segments or remove segments. And when you get like funny things, and it'll just all work out perfectly all the time. I promise. Disclaimer. Don't actually promise. I'm not, you know, whatever. Anyway, so these two will add together. It'll be our end angle plus our rotation. Uh, right now, our rotation for this is zero. But as we add more, then the rotation will, of course, go up. It's great. Uh, then we'll take this output. And this is another funny part of Espresso that took me a long time to figure out. And it doesn't make any sense, but it works. So... You know, just go with me. We're going to add two more degree to radians nodes. Nodes. We're going to take the first one from radians to degrees. Have that output to degrees to radians. And, you know, a keen observer will notice that we're going from degrees to degrees. And it doesn't make any sense. There's no processing going on in here. But for some reason, when I was using this before, it wouldn't work out. Just going straight from the math node to the rotation of uh, the object node. So I'm just going to put this in there. You can try it without it. Your mileage may vary. This is what worked for me. Go to coordinates and go to rotation, rotation H. Clean this up a little bit. Bring that in there. Control double click. And we should be looking pretty good. Now if we view, we should have, yep, our second segment. Look at that. It's going right in the right place. Change our percent and it follows it. What? And now if you can see. Just control drag and sort of do some rearranging. 
you could obviously set this up in a smarter way and have it reference down instead of up. But, you know, once again, this is just the way I came up with it. There's always going to be a better way than, you know, me messing around at like four in the morning in Cinema 4D trying to come up with tutorial ideas. But now you can see we've got a pie graph that will change all that we want. Just these things, like it's it just works so well, you know. So much business is happening. I hope you've enjoyed this little delve into the espresso land of Cinema 4D. I know I enjoyed you know, figuring this out for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like and maybe even share it with your friends and show them, you know, how cool this piece of software is. Even if they don't use it, you know, people are often impressed by nodal workflows, as you know referenced by some of my ridiculous DaVinci Resolve tutorials. If you've got any funny jokes or interesting comments, be sure to leave those down in the comment section. If you want to see more tutorials, Cinema 4D or, you know, anything else we got going on, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel. If the YouTube channel isn't enough, be sure to check out the website, www.meesternermedia.com and the social media stuff, links for which are in the description. If you think this is something you would use a lot, but you don't want to set up the expressions yourself, be sure to go to meesternermedia.com and click on the Downloads tab. That'll take you to a public Dropbox folder where you can get this scene file for free. If you've got more ideas for stuff you want to see, also be sure to leave those down in the comments because, you know, you guys know what you want to see better than I do. Well, I think I've rambled on long enough. Once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.